Welcome to this video in which we will solve a truss, or at least part of a truss, using the method of sections. The method of sections is particularly useful when you have a structure and you want to find the tension in some of the members but not in all of them. The idea is that you cut a section through the truss and then uh, use a free body diagram of the, of the part of the truss that you've cut the section of and that um, can actually make it quite simple to solve for tension in members if you do the section correctly and wisely. So here we have the truss that we'll use to demonstrate this. Uh, it has six joints, A through F, and uh, nine members labeled one through nine. And suppose that we want to find the tension in members five, six, and seven. So five, this guy, this guy, and this guy. Well, one way to do that is to cut a section through the truss that actually cuts through these five, or I'm sorry, through these three members that we want to find uh, the tension in. So let's do that. Let's just take the truss and, cru and cut it along this green line. And then what we'll do is we will draw a free body diagram of all of the truss to the left of the green line, solve that free body diagram, uh, for the tension in members 5, 6, and 7, and we'll be done. And it turns out, in this case at least, to be much simpler than solving all of the, uh, for the tensions in all of the members. Okay, so let's draw our free body diagram of the section we just cut. So we have um, joint C and joint F. We have a member here that we're not going to cut. If I recall correctly, this is number eight. We have a member here, which we've cut. This is number five. We've got a member here, which we've cut. This is number six. And we've got a member here, which we've cut. This is number seven. And the forces that we have, we have the load here of 30,000 pounds. We have T7 here, the tension in member 7. We have T6, the tension in member 6. And we have T5, the tension in member 5. And it turns out the angle for these guys, which you can check from the geometry, is 26.6 degrees there and 26.6 degrees here. Okay, so this is our free body, um, our free body diagram. Oops, what on earth happened there? Sorry. Okay, this is joint C, this is joint F. Now, we want to apply the three um, conditions for static equilibrium, that is the sum of the forces in the X and the sum of the forces in the Y, and the sum of the moments about a point equals zero. And in this case, we will choose um, point C to be the point about which we compute the moment. The reason for that is that all of the forces except for T7 uh, go through C, so it's going to make it easy. So we have the sum of the, I'm sorry, the sum of the moments about point C are equal to zero. Well, the only moment about point C is T7. It has a moment arm here of 12 feet. So we have T7 times 12 feet is equal to zero, which means that the tension in member seven is zero. Wasn't that easy? Okay, let's then uh, sum the forces in the Y direction. And we have that T5 um, sine 26.6 degrees, that's this guy going up, minus T6 sine 26.6 degrees, minus 30,000 is equal to zero. Okay, we can't solve this directly yet for anything. So let's sum the forces in the x direction. 
and we have here that uh, T5 cosine 26.6 degrees plus T6 cosine 26.6 degrees is equal to zero. And so this tells us that T5 is equal to negative T6. So we can take this and uh, plug it in to this equation to get T5 sine 26.6 degrees plus T5 sine 26.6 degrees and this is equal to 30,000 pounds from which we can compute that T5 is equal to 33,500 pounds and T6 then will be minus 33,500 pounds. So there you have it. That was actually a pretty simple computation. And it gives us the value of um, the tensions in the members that we wanted to know without having to solve for the tensions in any of the other members. And for this particular truss, it uh, turns out that probably if we took another section uh, through here to get T1, T3, and T4, that would be a pretty easy computation as well. And then we'd just have to find the tensions in the vertical members if we wanted all of the tensions, and that wouldn't be that bad. So for this particular truss, using the method of sections to find all of the uh, tensions in the members would not be it would probably be the easier way to do it. In general, that's probably not true. But for a case where you can cut the uh, the truss so that you find or that you have the tension in three unknown members, uh, this is an easy way to find those tensions. So hopefully you found this helpful, and that will conclude this video.